Hello and welcome to this video. This is called Introduction to Cells. And we will be looking at what cells are, how we study cells, and why studying cells is useful. So if we take a look at this house, you can see that a house is made up of individual units and the units are called bricks. So if we take a living organism, like this kitten, what's a living organism made up of? Well, it's made up of individual units and those units are called cells. So living organisms are made up of cells and a cell is the unit of a living organism. So before we move on, let's just check you understand what we mean by a living organism. So that is anything that is alive. So it includes plants, animals, and remember humans are animals, fungi like these mushrooms, and also microorganisms. All of these things are living organisms, so this means they're all made up of cells. So take some time, have a look at the back of your hand. Can you see the individual cells that make up your skin? Have a closer look. Well, it doesn't matter how close you look, you won't be able to see them, and that's because they're too small. Okay, so I've got 30 skin cells all lined up in a row here. So just how small are skin cells? Well, they would only take the distance of one millimetre. So if you have a look on a ruler at one millimetre, it's a tiny distance, but you could actually fit 30 skin cells in that distance. So that's how small these skin cells are. So no wonder you can't see them. But if you use a special instrument, you can see them if you magnify them enough. So what could you use to magnify the cells? Would you use a magnifying glass? What about a telescope? How about a microscope? Okay, you probably guessed. If you want to see cells, you would use a microscope. And this type of microscope is one that you may have seen before because you use them at school. And these are called light microscopes. So let's have a look at the history of the microscope then. So this scientist, very famous scientist, he lived in 1600s and his name was Robert Hooke. And here is his, mag his microscope. This is what he used. And he used it to look at living organisms and magnify them. And you can see some of his drawings at the back here. Now, this is a drawing that he drew of a piece of cork, which is tree bark. So remember, a tree is a living organism. So you can probably guess what these individual units are. Well, he had never seen these before. He named them cells because he thought they looked a bit like the cells in a prism. So he was the first person to recognise cells and give them a name. Nowadays, of course, scientists look at cells a lot and they use, do this for lots of different reasons. So they might use it to diagnose illnesses. Now, this is a sample that's been taken from a patient and these enlarged pieces here, these are cancer cells. So it's used to diagnose diseases like cancer. And it can also be used, this is for a fertility treatment. So this is actually a human egg, which is one cell. And the person, the scientist doing this is actually injecting a single sperm. You can just see the head of the sperm there into the egg. And they won't be able to do this without a microscope because it's so small. And also forensic scientists use microscopes. They might discover traces of um, skin or hair or fabrics at a crime scene and they can use microscopes to study them in more detail and help solve crimes. So here's a microscope, all the different parts. Let's have a look at what they do and how you would use it. So at the bottom here, we've got well, this is called an illuminator here, but we just call it a light normally. And uh, there could be an electric light or it could be a mirror to reflect light up. And the light gets reflected up into this bit here, which is the stage with the clips. And this is where you put your slide, which contains your specimen. OK, so here's the slide on the stage. Then what you would do is you would choose an objective lens. You would choose the smallest one, the smallest magnification first. Look down your eyepiece lens, which is at the top here. Look down there. And then you would focus what you would see using these dials here until your image was clear. Then, if you wanted to look at a higher magnification, you would choose another objective lens, a higher one. 
look down the eyepiece lens and you probably will have to focus it again. So that's how you use a microscope. So some safety points when using a microscope. The slides, which is where you put your specimen, and the cover slip, which is a little bit of glass that you put over the top, are very delicate. And if you break them, it's really important you ask your teacher to come and clear it up for you. You never touch broken glass yourself, you might hurt yourself. And also when you're focusing, you're going to be moving that slide up and down. So you've got to be careful not to hit the bottom of the eyepiece where the lens is, because you could crack it. And when carrying the microscope, support the base like this lady at the bottom here to make sure that it doesn't fall out of your hands and break. So when you look down the microscope, um, it's really important that you record your observations as a good scientist always will record their results. So here's an example of some drawings um, which have been drawn by a person studying something down a microscope. So they've put their magnification here and they've put some labels as well to, to um, describe what they're seeing. So how do we figure out magnification? You've got to use a very simple sum here. The total magnification is the eyepiece lens magnification multiplied by the objective lens magnification. So let's do an example here. The eyepiece lens that you use is times 10. They usually are times 10 magnification. And we're going with an example of an objective lens, which is times 100. So to get the total magnification, 10 times 100, then you'll get a total magnification of times 1000. Now this simply means that what you're looking at, the actual image you're seeing, is a thousand times bigger than the actual specimen that's on your slide. So a quick recap then, you should now be able to describe what a cell is and explain how we study them and state why this is useful.